Yo. What's good, world? Um, I'm here today to talk to you all about my uh, my total journey. Y'all seen my uh, my water fast, three day water fast situation. Um, but a lot of you haven't seen my entire journey from being 230 pounds at 5'9", going to 170 pounds, and then to 160 pounds, where I'm at now, you know, losing 70 pounds of weight in less than a year. How did I do it? Why did I do it? Um, and, you know, how do I keep it off now? And how is my life compared from now to then? Um, I started doing a lot of research. This is what got me hip to the shit. I started doing a lot of research about uh, ancestral lineage of people and where we all came from and how we got here and where we're going. And um, the more research I did, the more it brought me back to Africa. And um, the more research in Africa I did, through, through YouTube and stumbling upon books here and there and just picking up on knowledge here and there and watching documentaries. Um, I noticed that there was a higher awareness of people in the ancient time. Um, and in this ancient time, people were eating a certain way, people were living a certain way and people were creating things on a higher level than you've ever seen like the pyramids for for example um that was the golden age of human ancestral lineage was the uh was the the ancient egyptian and before that that age that's what they taught us in art history was the golden age was back when in ancient times when all these civilizations created these pyramids and created these things in uh, Peru and Mesopotamia and all these places. So what were the people eating back then? And what was the first human being like? What was the first human, human being, homo sapien eating like? And the more you do the research, the more that you see, we, we were a plant-based uh, creature. We are a plant-based creature. We don't have canine teeth like dogs, and you know we don't have short intestinal tracts, and we don't have night vision, and we don't have you know ability to carry twenty to thirty percent of our body weight in our stomachs regurgitated when we bring it back to our children and young ones. We don't do that. That's not what human beings do. Now. When you do the ancestral lineage of people, you will you find out that where people come from, um, in their ge in their geology, um, geographically, where do people come from? How did they come to be, and how did things mutate? Um, the mutation I'm speaking of is the white man and the the Asian. Well, mainly the white man, the Neanderthal, out of the Caucasus Mountains. That when you read Dr. Sebi's books and you listen to a lot of Dr. Sebi's interviews and, and research, you'll see, you'll hear and find a lot in times that a lot of the ways that we're eating now are caused by this Neanderthal way of thinking. You know, this Neanderthal diet, which was comprised of meat and starch and not very many plants. Like in Africa, we, we came out the jungle, so our bodies are prone to and, and, and dialed in and programmed to eat a certain way. Um, and since we don't eat a certain way in America, as Dr. Sebi explained in a lot of his uh, work and studies, was that we fail, our bodies fail under the, under the scrutiny of the Western diet. Uh, we have, as, as African-American people or indigenous people to this planet, we have struggled the worst with hypertension, diabetes, depression, um, 
cancers, uh, lupus, sickle cell, especially. And a lot of people will say a lot of these diseases are genetic. But what Dr. Sebi explained was that none of these things are genetic. Actually, all these things are caused by what you're eating and what your parents ate and how you're going to eat when you're harvesting your kids and when you're raising your kids. How are they going to be when they grow up, you know? Um, so, yeah, I was, first of all, what brought me to this place of research and going through this wormhole of all these studies is uh, it was just a calling to me. It was just something that spoke to me. Now, it, this happened before Nipsey Hussle died and all that conspiracy theorist shit happened. I was, I was on this wave for, I've been on this wave for about a year and some change now. So, you know, to see my growth in, in my living testimonial, my living in the proof is, uh, is, is, is awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't put into words how much this has helped me. All you can do is see the results, you know what I'm saying? And hear the results and see the clarity in my mind and just the overall direction where I want to go in my life now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so let's get back to it. So what, what the Neanderthals were forced to eat in the caves, they were, let's put it like this, the, the world broke. The world was connected at one point in time. All these continents that you see now were all connected. That's why you'll see sculptures of a black man's face like the ancient Omics in South America. We traveled this world way before Christopher Columbus. Let's bring it back to, let's bring it back to, uh, the Neanderthal cave though. And then let's explain to you what happened in the Neanderthal cave and how the mutation took place. Um, as black people, the first original man was colored, was a, was a colored human being because our skin has melanin in it and it is receptive to the, the, the sun rays, sunlight, which gives us vitamin D and vitamin D actually helps us grow our bones. And there's also been studies done that melanin actually absorbs the energy from the sun, extracts the UV radiation, protects it, and then harnesses that energy and then turns it, turns it into uh, calories that we can burn and gives us energy, actually. So shit gets deep, man. But as, we, as these continents broke off and geographical catastrophes happened in the world, uh, people were stranded on these land masses and put in places where they didn't have adequate sunlight, didn't have adequate uh, climate to harvest plants or find plants. So what did they have to do? They had to make fires and go into caves. And it's said that a lot of them were cannibalistic. You know, and I tie this in with a lot of the Book of Enoch and the Fallen Angels of Lucifer and all that too. Uh, if you haven't researched the Book of Enoch, you should go check that out because that also shows you where we come from as people. Kind of religious. I'm not. I'm not a religious person, but I believe that there's truth in all religious textbooks, and I think that you know some consistencies can be had and seen and shown throughout all religious textbooks. Like you have Abraham in in the Quran, and you have Jesus in the in the Bible. Uh, basically the same type of characters on different different books but the shit gets deep man when you when you realize uh where we come from where we're going and where, what we're in right now um think of it like this when people were brought to the caucus mountains the world brought them there. the universe said here there's a big a volcano, big earthquakes that happened, big maybe comets hit the earth, and now we have split up continents, and you have uh, people that actually mutated over time, not having adequate enough sunlight, not having uh, the diet. They lost their pigment in their skin. They became real sick and ill. Um, and it said that uh, Crohn's and lupus and all those those diseases and cancers and all this, all that comes out of the Caucasus Mountains. All that comes out of the Neanderthal gene. Um, now, since Neanderthal gene people or people that originated in the Caucasus Mountains are no longer here anymore, of course, Neanderthals are extinct, but uh, some white people have the Neanderthal gene in them. A lot of us have the Neanderthal gene in them. But 
what's more prevalent in white people is that they're able to digest certain foods better than black people or colored people on this planet, or I would say carbonated or melanated people on this planet. Um, we're, we're, we're colored just like the, the plants and leaves go through photosynthesis and attract sunlight through carbon and uh, they, it's a color. You know, why are solar panels black? It's a color um, and black attracts sunlight. So when you think of it, these people lost their pigmentation. And when you're vitamin D deficient, you also become, uh, it's said that you're more, ang you're more anxious, you're more depressed. Uh, you have more of a criminal mind, I would say, or more of, sus more of a susceptibility to a criminal mind. Um, and then you, you, if you understand totally why some things happened in the past, like Hitler and slavery and all these things, it's not far fetched. Look at the people that's doing all this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what do you expect? How are you not surprised? Vitamin D deficient people. So it really, it really goes into the minerals, man, and what we're doing. So when I found that out, then you. Then you do the history of how we eat here in America and how African-Americans eat and how even Africa eats now, how they eat off of the Western diet. You know what I'm saying? Like my uncle's sick in Africa. My uncle has diabetes. You know what I'm saying? But Africa's the embryo of vegan, vegan or uh, alkaline plant based lifestyle. That's the embryo of it. So. Um. Say that to say, when I found out all of this information, yo, and I was eating a poor diet, and I was addicted. We're addicted to these foods. I'm a, I was addicted to chicken wings. I was addicted to, you know, cheeseburgers and fries and all that shit, man. Like that, that shit was killing me, though. You know, um, and when Doctor Sebi put it in the perspective that mucus is the creator of the disease, and that the whole world has fallen off track with this Westernized diet. You know, with the dairy, you know, white people have enzymes in their stomach, bacteria in their stomach called lactate enzymes, where they actually can break down milk. 33% of white people are lactose intolerant. 75% of uh, black people in America are lactose intolerant. 95% of Asians in America are lactose intolerant. 58% of Mexicans or Hispanics in America are lactose intolerant. Basically, the whole world is lactose intolerant besides white people. So you have a skewed dietary plan for people provided to you by the government, the USDA and the FDA and all these fucking DAs, right? So what do you do with this? I mean, do what you will. But, you know, when I seen the information from Dr. Sebi, I, I took it into my uh, own life and I practice it. Um, you know, when he, when I figured out he cured all these diseases known to man, that was the first insight of like, yo, I got to see, I got to, I got to understand what this is all about. I got to know, you know, what's going on here. How do we not know that this man cured all these diseases? Why isn't this being talked about? Why isn't this diet being, you know, taught in schools? And then you ask the question, why are, why are so many of us going to jail? Why are so many of us depressed and suicidal and homicidal and overweight and sick? And why does it attack the black community so much? And why does uh, Popeyes accept EBT? You see what's going on, y'all. Like, you see what's going on. So when Dr. Sebi broke it down, you know, and, this, and when I found Dr. Sebi, I was at a place in my life where I was completely alone, you know. And in that loneliness, I found him and I found his teachings on the, online. And uh, all of a sudden, when I started putting food into my body that actually helps me and I can, and, and it reacts well in my body and I can feel the difference. Literally, I can feel myself more energetic or I can feel myself getting sick and tired after eating, you know, a bunch of fried foods and fried chickens and shit like that like you got to notice how your body feels and I, and I paid attention to that and um it has done wonders for me just to be aware you know be aware of what's going on and the self-love that I got 
you know, just loving myself and completely being in tune with the universe. It has literally opened me up to see the whole spectrum of humanity, not for just what I see in my little lifetime. I see it for what is beyond me. And while I'm doing this, I understand that I'm going to be a sacrifice and an example set forth for people to see and understand and then live forward and go forward and progress as people. You know, a lot of people have asked me in, at the gym, like, yo, every time I see you, you look better. You look skinnier. You look healthier. You look leaner. And, and um, that's what keeps me going, man. And, and just putting other people up on this shit and healing people and, and inspiring people to, you know, be more healthy and be more conscious of what you're putting in your body. You know, I've had athletes hit me up, uh, people that have played in the NBA, and they're like, yo, I see what you're doing, man. I see your body change because I used to be super overweight. Like, I used to be sipping lean. I used to be on drugs, Xanax and shit. Like, I used to be just, just super unhealthy and not caring about my body at all, not caring about my spirit at all. So when I got introduced to this alkaline lifestyle, it helped me fully see full circle every aspect of my life that needed healing and it healed it. You know, um, when you're putting good things in your body, good things come out. You know what I'm saying? Um, imagine carrying 70 pounds of extra weight on you that you don't need to have. And then mentally carrying stress on your mind that you don't need to have. Um, so many beautiful things have happened because of this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can notice the difference in uh, the way I deal with people, the way I see people, the way I interact with people, the way I handle myself and carry myself, the way I stand up and walk straight. And a lot, like... When you're when you're overweight, you're slumped over. Like you, you can't even move correctly. Like Doctor Sebi said, before you can walk straight and upward as a human being is supposed to, you have to fast and lose that extra weight. You have to get healthy. You have to be in optimal condition. And the only way you can get into optimal condition and operate at optimal uh, uh, conditions is if you put optimal foods in your body. We, Dr. Sebi taught us, that taught me that we're completely uh, uh, mineral, we're completely electric beings that operate on minerals. You know what I'm saying? We need iron, magnesium, uh, zinc, uh, you know, B12, all these different things that we need. Um, are, you know, all these things are found in plant foods. Um, to see the whole world just go through hell, man, with these with the meat, see how we're addicted to blood and, and starch, yo, and salt and sugar. We're addicted to that shit, yo. And we're literally being fed the same foods that we ate being slaves here in America. We're still eating chicken wings and chitlins and all this shit and hog moss. All this shit was, was actually our slave food that was given to us by the master. So we're still eating what the master gave us? We can't do that no more, y'all. We can't do that. We know what it's doing to us. People are waking up, man. It's time for y'all to wake up, man. Like, it was time for me to wake up and just show the world and just show y'all and just be me. Not even, you know, I'll just do this just for me and my quality of life. People always say, well, man, you're, you're vegan or whatever, but you're not going to live longer. No, it's not about living longer. It's about the quality of life. Would you rather be on pills for the rest of your life? on your deathbed, like barely alive living on hypertension pills and dialysis and radioactive treatments and shit like chemotherapy. Would you rather go through all that shit than to just sacrifice the shit that tastes good, but ain't good for you? I mean, what are we doing here? Y'all, what are we here for? You have to ask yourself that. When you do, and that's why I always go back into ancient times. What are we here for? You know, as an artist and a visual person, coming from a visual person, I totally understand what we're here for. And I know what I'm here for. I know what my purpose is. My purpose is to learn from, teach you, and create and express myself and express the times of 
not only which we're in, but where we are supposed to be going. Um, so we got to understand what our purpose is here on life. And that's the purpose of every man and woman is to progress humanity. And we're not progressing eating slave food. We're not progressing calling our, each other not black enough because we don't uh, subscribe to the set slave food. You know what I mean? Um, so, I, and I've, this is, this is another thing, y'all. I've tried every single fad diet, keto diet, all this shit, all diets. I've tried them. This one is the best one. This is not just a diet. This is a lifestyle change to only eat what God intended you to, not even God, but the higher power of the universe intended you to. That is what we're here to do. That creates your body working at optimal prime, optimal conditions. And it, and it creates a heightened awareness. See, a lot of us are, are operating in our lower frequencies. You know what I'm saying? And when you're operating in the lower frequency, you attract people in them lower frequencies. You attract people that want to be on the same level as you when you're doing that shit. You, you live, you put out in the world, you externalize your image and your energy and your frequency, right? We're all at, we're all here on different frequencies. We're all spirits moving on this. We're all, we are, we are a global consciousness moving at all different frequencies. You understand that? We are a global connected consciousness moving at all different frequencies. So what does that mean? That means you have a lot of people lost. So what, what do we have to do? We have to harness the negative energy in this world and we have to teach each other and learn from each other what to do to move forward. We have to understand where we came though as a people. So you always have to go back and understand why, why this has happened. They got us lost in the diet. They took our names away, turned our people inside out and upside down by the metal gun. And, you, and, and then they force feed us this food. That's an art of war, man. The art of war. One of the, one of the methods of war is actually poisoning a people's food chain. You know, if you can control the food, you can control the people. It's simple. It's, it's math, yo. Like, if you can control what people are literally ingesting all the time, from the drugs to the water to everything, you control them. And you control the frequencies they move at. So, yeah, carbon-based diet, man. Straight up, we do, you know, <laughs> the melanin situation and the penile gland situation has been a cover-up. Um, our diet, our history has been a cover-up. Our royalty has been a cover-up. Um, the history books that they teach all in school is a cover up. The pyramid, uh, food pyramid is a cover up. That's all bullshit, man. Christopher Columbus is a cover up, man. Like, come on, yo. Come on. Um, so let's go back to this journey I'm on, right? Um, when I found out all the shit that we was eating was poison, I immediately switched. And, and, and it was a transitionary stage. It wasn't like just like a, a blink of an eye, night and day switch for me, cold turkey. I'm not eating chicken wings again. I went through a transitioning stage of where I would um, where I would have cheat days. You know, first I got rid of pork. Pork is probably the worst meat you could probably ingest in your entire lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Like, Pork is, my daddy taught me that. My dad was African straight from Zaire, straight from the Dometic, Dominican uh, Republic of Congo. And he was a chef and he would tell me how disgusting pork was. How, you know, it rolls in its own feces and eats its own feces. So I got rid of pork real young, you know, and then got rid of beef. Probably when I was, I, I got hip to the, the cancer causes of beef when I was probably 20, 22. I'm 30 now. So about eight years ago, I understood it. So I kind of cut back on that. 
Um, but I really cut it out on this journey. You know what I'm saying? Like I went to just chicken for a while and salmon and fish. And I was eating those uh, with my meals and, and eating a lot more plants and fruits. And then I actually went to cutting off chicken completely and just ate shrimp and salmon and crab and scallops and just whatever I could eat like a pescatarian almost on my cheat days. Now these are only on my cheat days through the week. Let's say a year ago, this is how I was doing it. For, for a week, I would go and just only eat meat on the weekends, maybe two or three days, two or two or one days, three to one days out of the week, I'm eating meat. And the rest of the week, I'm dieting or I'm eating a plant-based, alkaline plant-based lifestyle. I'm eating quinoa, I mean, uh, stir-fried vegetables with that. I mean, a lot of Ezekiel bread with avocado toast with avocados and olive oil and tomato and onion on top, guacamole toast. Um, I'm eating a lot of salads. I mean, a lot of garbanzo beans, hummus, uh, uh, falafel. And eat. I was eating a lot of plant-based meat products as well, switching over, even though there's, those are not good for you. Plant-based meat products are the worst for you. You know what I'm saying? But they're a good tra transition to get away from meat, which is also very bad. I mean, which pick your poison kind of. But, you know, only use that for transitionary stages. Like the there's a lot of soy products. I stay away from soy. You can be a bad vegan and you have to do your research. That's why Dr. Sebi's plan is amazing, because he understood hybridized plants and hybridized people and hybridized animals and hybridized everything. And he understood organic everything organic matter, organic uh, plants and vegetable plants and fruits that were here brought to us by the higher uh, power or the uh, a higher intelligence, I would say. Um, these things that are brought to us that we were meant to eat. Um, Dr. Sebi recommended cannabis, you know what I'm saying? Because we have cannabinoid receptors built into our body. They also, there's also a theory that cannabis is, was put here. That cannabis is an organic plant that was put here. And when it was put here, they say uh, it was put here during the times of the Neanderthal and the Homo sapien times, and it merged those two creatures together. It, it decalcifies your penile gland cannabis, and it, it uh, created that love to happen between Neanderthal and Homo sapien to the point where. Neanderthals couldn't mate with each other no more, and they only mate they they were only be able to pr reproduce mating with uh, homo Homo sapiens. So that's why you have no more Neanderthals because we we had sex and and we combined and they're extinct. That's why we have Neanderthal genes. That's why the white man came from us, but we did not come from it. So that's another cover up. Um, they came from us. We did not come from them. You can't make a black person with two white people, but you can make a white person from two black people. Um, so once you realize all these things and the cover-ups and the schemes and all this shit, uh, you realize what's what's supposed to be in you. And I, I started eating all these foods, and I seen the weight just shred off my just just I literally leave my body. The weight left. It was going like like none other like. And I was doing intermittent fasting, you know what I'm saying? I'm a guy that it's tough to lose weight. I have a very slow metabolism. I have a very poor reactive, weight reactive, weight water retention type of body. So if I eat something bad, immediately my body feels it. I see it. I notice it. And it's reactive. Um, so when I was eating the right things, my body reacted the same way. As opposed to gaining weight real rapidly, I lost the weight real rapidly. And uh, <clears throat> I got to listen to my body. My body's my temple. And I got to listen to my gut. When I was drinking a lot of dairy products or eating ice cream every once in a while on the weekends and, and eating that chicken on the weekends and eating that salmon on the weekends from time to time, I could notice the difference a lot more from eating five days of plants and fruits to eating, you know, some shitty food on the weekend. You'll be able to see the difference when you hit that gym on Monday versus the week, the weeks, the, during the week when you're hitting the gym consecutively on a plant-based diet. You'll see the difference. You'll feel the difference, and you'll understand it. Um, 
my recovery time from the, I play a lot of basketball. So my recovery time was rapid. You know, when I used to eat a lot of meat during the week and play basketball, I noticed my joints were real achy and my, I, I just feel real sore after every exercise. But after, after I did the plant-based stuff and, and, and took the herbal compounds that, that Dr. Sebi recommends, because there's some herbal compounds that uh, are great. And they're in these books by Akil and Nice called the Al Alkaline Plant Bad, the Alkaline Plant-Based, uh, plant-based uh, meal book or food book. And then they have the Akil Anise, which is based on Dr. Sebi's teachings. Uh, you can order it on Amazon by Akil Anise, A-Q-U-I-L-A-N-Y-I-S, I believe. And he, he has these books. Um, He has these books um, called Alkaline Herbal Medicine, yep. Um, and it's a two-part book. It comes with the foods that you should eat and it comes with the herbs that you should take. And they're all based on the compounds that Dr. Sebi used to cure cancer, cure AIDS, cure all these diseases and balance your body at this pH level. Dr. Sebi opened my eyes to the pH balance of what your body is supposed to be. I didn't know anything about pH levels. I didn't know anything about alkaline. Alkaline. You have to understand the definition of alkaline if you want to understand alkaline. The definition of alka alkalinity is the pH above 7.5. Is and it measures the the acidity in your food. So if you have something that has a low pH, it's it's going to turn to acid in your body. Some foods, some but some 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 fruits have high acid in them, but they react and metabolize in your body and turn to. Um, alkaline in your body like pineapples and things like that citrusy fruits they're acidic but they alkalize in the body um i started not eating breakfast i stopped eating breakfast because i did a lot of research on intermittent fasting and fasting in general and you know that really helped me only eating from 4 to 7 p.m every day really helped me lose that weight and really helped me understand and, and have a full clarity of the mind every day. You know, I'm not hungry and having these crash binges of hunger and starvation. And I'm not hoarding a bunch of food in my mouth at certain points of the day, you know what I'm saying? At, at all times of the day, rather. You know, I kind of eat more consciously. So I only eat when I'm hungry. If I'm not hungry, I'm not gonna eat. You know, and when you eat certain carbohydrate foods that are highly processed and have high a lot of preservatives in them, they're going to turn off the lipids in your brain. Lipids are in your brain and they control uh, when your brain says it's full and when your brain says it needs more. And the lipids get turned off when you eat these, these bad carbs, these high carbohydrate diets. You gotta understand the difference between good carbs and bad carbs. You gotta understand, you gotta st stop eating the white flour, y'all. Stop eating the white sugar. Stop eating the white powder. Anything white, stop eating it. Stop eating white potatoes. Those don't metabolize in your body very good. The molecular structure is incomplete, according to Dr. Seven. You know, there's certain plants that you should stay away from, like broccoli. That's invented by white people. You know, that's invented by people that in, in, the, in, the, in the Italians in the 1700s. You know, we invented a lot of these things. Like, we invented the pig from the wild boar. You know, it's kind of like dogs and, and pets and shit. Like we're hybridizing all these animals and we're hybridizing all these plants and we're hybridizing all these fruits. Well, what's genetically modified and what's really real anymore? You know what I'm saying? Um, also, let's talk about our connection to the cosmos and our connection, my connection to the universe and how that's grown over the last year after being on this alkaline plant-based lifestyle. You know, I'm more level headed. You know, I came from a very toxic life. You know, I used to be damn near a woman beater, a womanizer, an abuser. And, you know, I used to, used to be that drug addict dude, used to be a toxic person, a, a narcissist almost. And, um, you know, and I used to attract these type of people. We well, have to understand what I'm putting in my body and how that externalizes and how that attracts people. <laughs> Um, on the same frequencies. Now I'm in my higher self, you know what I'm saying? And people see it. You know, when you fast intermittently, 
uh, there becomes a process. And I fast for long periods of time, too, as you can see, my three-day water fast. But the fasting is amazing, man. Like, that really heals your brain. It actually creates uh, new cells, new immune system cells in your body when you fast. And your skin clears up. I noticed that when I stopped eating a lot of dairy and pus-filled items and uh, pus-filled products and the highly preservatives products, my face would clear up. You know, my face would, my skin would glow. The color in my skin would just be perfect. You know what I'm saying? And I just have an aura about me that's different. You know, I have a clarity about me that's different. Once I cut out all the crap, you know what I mean? Um, I think it healed my depression a lot just to find mental stability. And, and as people, we, we suffer from this shit, man. Black males in America, we have a lot of pressure on us. A lot. You know what I'm saying? Whether that just be walking outside and community pressuring us or the law pressuring us or society systematically pressuring us or ourselves pressuring us, pressuring ourselves. And we're always being pulled in so many different directions. You know what I'm saying? It's time to pull ourselves in the right direction, y'all. It's time to pull ourselves in the direction of the universe. We have to listen to the universe's language and understand that we are lost as a people right now. We are lost. The majority of us are lost. And we need to find ourselves ASAP. You know what I'm saying? We need to fix this problem. We need to get out of this dark age. We need to get back to nature. We need to get back to appreciating what the, what the universe has left for us and not disregard it as all oh, this just tastes bland. Appreciate that apple. Appreciate that cucumber. Appreciate the avocado. Appreciate, you know, uh, the the uh, the garbanzo beans and the rolled oats. Appreciate oat milk. Appreciate uh, all the things, man. All the things. The, pe the bell peppers, the green peppers, red peppers, all the colors. Eat things with a lot of colors. You know what I'm saying? Things with color are great for you and, and create this, this energy for the body that is unmatched by any meat product. Um, I don't plan on living forever. I know I can't live forever physically. But I know this video will live for a while, and I know that my energy will never be destroyed. It will only be transmitted. So with that being said, you guys can see this, man. 70 pounds later, a year later, and I'm still going. You know, this is a lifestyle change. This ain't no diet for me. This is something that I have to teach my, my kids when I have them. This is something I got to have, like, my wife got to understand, my queen, whoever it is that, that I choose to partner with has to understand these things because this is so important to me. You know, this is, this is fuck religion. What's up with your spirituality? You know what I'm saying? Fuck religion. You know what my religion is? My religion is nature. That's my, that's my teacher. That is the almighty. And women, you know, the, the creator, they can create people. They created me. You know, my, mom, my mom created me and with my dad, but, you know, just to harvest me and nurture me, and all that is unmatched by any creator on earth. They are the ultimate human creators. But um, I just, you know, It's amazing to, to zoom out and see where we're at, man. It's amazing to see this shit. Like, see where we've come to building fucking pyramids, to being lost in society, eating rotten meat. We're eating rotted flesh. We're addicted to flesh. That's cannibalistic behavior, y'all. Neanderthals used to eat each other in those caves, y'all. In the Book of Enoch, the giants, the Nephilim giants used to eat each other. Who were they talking about? Who was the white man in the book of Enoch? Research the book of Enoch, y'all. Understand the Anunnaki. And Dame Dash, shout out to Dame Dash, because he's putting out a, a, a whole series that I think is going to be amazing, man, where he's talking about the Anunnaki and the original man and how the, how we came to be, how, the, how these megalithic uh, pyramids came to be. And he's putting some dialogue behind it. And he's making it like an avatar type film. 
the series. So I think that's dope, man, to educate people. We It's all about knowledge. You know, the more people that come out and say shit like I'm saying it, and the more people that come out and say and, and, and are basically like the whistleblowers, man, we're needed. You know, we're needed. And um, you know, I don't care. I don't care the quality of this video. I don't care how shitty the quality is. I just want to get this message out. Um, and I think it's it's important and prominent to to, to get this thing out, man. Prevalent. Um, so yeah, when when I started, like I said, I had those cheap days, and I was able to notice the difference. And then eventually, I just cut out everything. You know, rec up until recently, like. Last month, I cut off fish. Every every once in a while, I'd have fish. But, you know, I, I realized I can't do that no more. It's just the same thing as meat. So, um, you know, don't beat yourself up too much, though. You know, you're going to slip if you follow this journey. You're going to slip off. And, you know, the programming of the devil is so ridiculous. It's so ridiculously cunning. And it's so ridiculously... Uh, attractive you know what i'm saying to to eat this poison but we have to stop yo. Know? like the sh the shenanigans is up you know the the gig is up we understand what y'all doing to us now you want us sick so we can be on pharmaceutical pills for the rest of our lives and to pay the pharmaceutical industry and to kill us off and to kill each other through this depressed mind we have Go over North Minneapolis. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Let's go over North Minneapolis. Or rather, let's go to Chicago where I used to live. Yeah, let's go over South Side Chicago and see what, what type of food they eat. Let's see what type of food they're providing the, the niggas in Chicago. And then we got to understand why they running rampant, full of adrenaline, killing off each other every five minutes. 500 bodies getting, getting washed up on the shores in Chicago due to the black on black violence. We gotta understand ourselves, yo. White people ain't gonna come do it for us cause they lost. They like the dairy product. They like the meat. They like the starch. They ain't gonna listen to what you need. They ain't gonna understand you. You gotta understand yourself and what your lineage is and where you come from. Which is another interesting topic. But that's a whole nother video that I wanna get into slave trade and how that never really happened the way they said it happened. And how a lot of the roots is propaganda and not really real factual information. They want us to, to, to teach us to, that we're slaves from the beginning. They want us to believe in that so much. You know, It's, it's crazy, the wool that they try to pull over us, the mask that we try to pull over us, the melanin in our skin. In Chicago right now, I appreciate the nod most deaf, man. Chicago needs the healing the most. Chicago needs this Dr. Sebi diet. We don't need no money from no government. We just need the motherfuckers to stay out the way, straight up. We need people to stay out our way of getting shit done. We needed people to stay out of Nipsey Hussle's way while he was trying to get shit done. Now, there's some people that won't, that they're not going to listen. They're gone. They're too lost. And we have to accept this. And we have to alleviate ourselves from trying to help some of these people. I'm here to, to, to give knowledge to the people that are receptive. So even if this video has 100 views in a week, I don't give a fuck. Because those 100 views came from some people watching this shit. And some people are going to take heed to it. So as long as some people are receiving this message, those are the right ones. Those people who comment in my shit right now. Those three people. That's all I need. If my classroom is this small, one day it'll be that big. Trust me. Because that brings me to my next purpose in life and walking into another purpose of not just shooting music videos, but teaching you how to make music videos, teaching you how to create a business, teaching you how to eat, teaching you how to breathe, teaching you how to live, man, teaching you how to meditate and teach other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we need to be on. Fuck money. Fuck the money. Money ain't going to help you do shit. Money's going to help you get some material. I'm from Canada and I go to college in East Chicago. 
man, we're all connected, man. We all in Chicago. We're all in Chicago. Man, Chicago is something else for me, man. Like, like, like Kanye West said. That's one of my biggest inspirations. One of the greatest people I've ever met in my entire life or had the chance to be around. Shout out to John Monopoly as well. If you're from Chicago, you know who John Monopoly is. And that was my assistant manager in my career. So let's break that down for a second. But, um, you know, like Kanye West said, Larry Hoover is me in an alternate universe. We need to free me. We need to free ourselves. We need to we need to understand. We need to put ourselves in every perspective in everyone's shoes because we are literally going through this experience together in life. We are all in the movie theater in life and sitting at different seats and watching this movie from different perspectives. So we all have different angles of this movie, right? Some of us are in jail. Some of us are are obese and can't get out of our personal jail our personal hell. Some of us are uh, above, are actually creating this movie that we see, that the rest of the world is watching. You know, some people are projecting the image. So um, when you think of it like that, you understand that karma's real, energy's real, and you you feel when someone's going through pain. Like trees, I under, when, you, when you understand nature and you do research on trees, um, you'll understand that trees, when one is dying, the roots underneath the tree actually send nutrients through the roots under the ground to the next tree to help it nurture itself back to health. That is how human beings should be. And that is actually how human beings are hardwired to be. We're not hardwired to hate each other and be hate, hateful and warmongering creatures. That was the Neanderthal. That was the, the Vikings that came out the the the... the you know, came off the ships and started slaughtering motherfuckers like, you know, we got to understand we're all in this together, man. And that's what I understood. We're all in this together and we need to pull each other up. You know, my hand's here and I'm, I'm willing to pull people. I'm willing to pull people. I'm willing to show people. That's all I'm here for. My hands are out and I'm willing to pull you. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm willing to care for you. And I'm willing to receive too. My hands are out as well to receive your information. If you have anything to tell me that's going to put me on game, tell me. I was following one of Dr. Sebi Dodds and slipped up as soon as I came back to the States for school. Yeah, man. Um, that's one of the devil's tricks. Having a nine to five job and uh, trying to get enmeshed with the, the capitalistic world and the pressures of society. Yes, it will have you backtrack. Yes, you when you go to any corner stores, even your uh, even your school uh, lunch cafeterias at college, they're not gonna have they're not gonna have more positive things to eat than negative things to eat, especially in America. I don't know how Canada is as far as like their dietary plans and shit like that, but I did hear Canada actually got rid of milk and dairy out of a lot of their grocery stores, like they damn near banned it. So I think they're more hip to the oat milks and the, the coconut milk. Stay away from soy, stay away from soy milk. I just wanna put that out to people. Stay away from soy. Um, let's go back to my journey for a second. Um, while I was going through this journey, I would hit plateaus eating meat on the weekends and coming back to the gym. You know, I would just stay in one area of 175. I would never get to this optimal weight that I needed to be at body mass index of 23 and in, in my body fat uh, percentage is actually 16 or 15 percent now, which is like that of an athlete. So how did I get there? I had to fast more. When you have that stubborn, I have stubborn belly weight even still to this day. I have a little bit. And to get rid of that, you have to be so disciplined. You have to be so disciplined, man. That mental strength is going to be tested in America. It is going to be tested everywhere because America has infected the world. There's a McDonald's in Egypt. There's a Pizza Hut outside of the pyramids in Egypt. So... Even in Jamaica, when I went to Jamaica, I understood. I, I seen Rastas living in the jungles or on the side of the road and, and no running water. And then you see people 
going to Burger King in the inner cities in Jamaica and Ultra Rios and shit. You know, half my family's Jamaican. Another a little bit of background on me: half half my family's Jamaican. I've been in Jamaica over a hundred times. My brother lived down there. God God bless his soul. Rest in peace, Mark Lewis. He was murdered down there in 2013. Um, and uh, but I've had a lot of experiences down there, and I, and a lot of good people I met were Rastafari, and they had a lot of knowledge, man. Like the knowledge I received from people is amazing, yo. And just traveling the world, I encourage people to travel too on this journey. But you know, I'm just at a beautiful place right now. I'm at the sweet spot where it's like, you know, I, I can walk in front of a chicken wing, chicken wing dinner, and just not even acknowledge it anymore like i don't even see the shit anymore you know what i'm saying um jerk chicken i used to love jerk chicken man i used to cook up whip up some jerk chicken like none other you know what i'm saying and but there's some dope jamaicans like they have these people called bush doctors that recommend certain things and actually one of the things that i've been taking is irish sea moss and that actually comes from the caribbeans and jamaicans take this shit all the time my brother used to take irish sea moss and irish sea moss is something that's recommended by dr sebi i put this in my smoothies every morning y'all every morning um i use uh this gel that i make boiling irish sea moss and extracting the nutrients washing it off e extracting the nutrients from it and creating this gel that you can actually topically put on your skin and your hair and ingest it and it has 92 out of the 102 minerals that your body needs so dr seven used to fast on this stuff for extended periods of time and he would never become hungry because this stuff actually has B12, it has all these different magnesium, zinc, iron, all these things in it, calcium, all these things in it. And what that shit does actually turns the lipids off that makes you hungry. I talked about lipids before, we're gonna talk about it again. It turns off the lipids in your brain, which cause you to be hungry. And it cuts off that, that, that fiending for sugary sweet things. So CMOS is, is a motherfucker, man. Like. I'm so grateful for, for Dr. Seppi, his knowledge, his compounds he, he made, and his insight on things, man. It was just amazing, man. So y'all should take Irish sea moss. Be careful where you get it from. Make sure that it's real sea moss because I heard that there's some fake plastic shit out there. Um, you can get it locally. If you're in Minneapolis, you can get it locally at the West Indies market here called uh, Galaxy Food and Video um, in Richfield. It's off 71st in Chicago. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you went, so that's crazy. You're from Canada. You go to school in East Chicago. That's what's up, man. How do you know if the CMOS is real or not? Honestly, man, it's, it's kind of like a hit or miss situation. Um, it's, it's tough, man. Um, find a product that, find a product that you can trust. Find a product that looks real. Research what CMOS looks like and try to match it up with that when you're going to pick it up. You know what I'm saying? If the shit don't look right, the shit ain't right. You know what I'm saying? But I think um, it's supposed to be like that beige. Here, I'll, I'll go get my package I have, actually. Uh, and I'll show you the books that I take and I read and... All the shit that I do, man. Bear with me. Okay. So here we have Irish sea moss, Irish moss. This is what I get. All right. This shit is real. This shit, look how much sea salt is on this shit, though. You have to take a long time to, you have to rinse this stuff, wash it off, and uh, really cure this stuff. You know, rinse rinse it off with, with spring water or, um, you know, some type of water that's pH balance is like decent. 
enough, I guess, but make sure you get all the salt off and then boil it for like 20 minutes and then uh, put it through a filter. And what happens is I'll get the... <clears throat> This is actually the stuff that, uh, if you know King Chip or Chip the Ripper, he, uh, we actually went to lunch together in LA and he actually gave me some of the sea moss himself. And it was my first time ever receiving it from him. And um, I made this gel out of it. And when you, when you put that, that water with the nutrients in it, when you boil it, you, you filter out all, the, all this shit. And it leaves this aquafaba jelly type gelatin. And, um, you know, it, it has a very distinct smell and taste. I ain't going to lie. So it's you got to put, you know, what I do, I put this in my smoothies. I use a plant-based protein powder, which is made from peas. And I use uh, chia seeds and two dates and a banana frozen and frozen peaches and cinnamon to mask this this taste because it's a motherfucker to just drink this or taste this by itself so you know i put a couple scoops of this in, in my smoothies and man it's it's amazing you know i don't get hungry throughout the day until like you know four or seven like i said i usually go to the gym from 11 to 12 30 Play, play a lot of basketball, do a lot of cardio, high intensity cardio. I love basketball because it just works out every muscle that, that you're not used to working out. Um, and then, you know, just doing all that with the diet really made the difference. You know what I'm saying? Like <clears throat> um, this book saved my, this is my Bible. I call this my Bible. I've, if you've seen my water fast, you'd understand how important this book is to me. Yeah, you wanna yeah, uh Devante, you wanna mix that, mix the uh mix the sea moss with something. Make sure that you douse it with some some cinnamon, some some agave syrup, or some dates in your smoothies. And use coconut milk or oat milk is what I use. And um uh, hemp seeds, chia seeds, frozen banana, uh Couple of scoops of the 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 sea moss gel here, and you can put this on your hair and on your skin. Like I said, um, but yeah, this book. Let's go back to the book. This book is the Bible, yo. This book has saved my life straight up, and I make so many compounds out of this herbal medicine book. Um, let's just read. Let me just read to you what's on the back of this book. Alkaline herbal medicine gives insight into many of the herbs used to reverse disease in Dr. Sebi's African bio-mineral balance. It covers scientifically supported properties, preparation, doses, and dosages, and how to combine herbs. It addresses alkaline foods on the Dr. Sebi Nutritional Guide and their chemical affinity with and support of the electric body. The natural order in life designed the body to be healthy and heal under the right conditions. These conditions are programmed into the DNA of Homo sapiens, whose base DNA makeup is the African genome. You understand this? This is this is like beyond. Like who wrote this? All right. Diet centered on the consumption of natural alkaline plant foods and ample exposure to the sun. Now, supported the healthy expression of the African genome. So what that's saying is our bodies were literally put underneath the sun and amongst plants and vegetables to thrive and um, create the this makeup of the African genome, which is the, the genome of the original man of the earth, of the planet, right? So this is how God intended us or the higher natural order in life designed us. You cannot deny this. This is not deniable information. The environment of Africa, environments similar to Africa, produce life that develop with a complete and balanced electrical structure. Like I said, we are electrical beings, right? Um, let's talk about it for a second. Hey, I noticed you said the matrix, man. Um, it's crazy you say that because I totally believe this is a matrix. I, I totally believe when Kanye West says shit like, you know, we're in the fucking... Um, 
<laughs> what does he say? We're in the, uh, it's like Sim City. The, uh, we're in the system, man. Let's just call it the system for right now because I can't find the fucking word I want to use. But we're in the system. And the system is designed. And the design of the system has a faulty design, right? And you can see right through the shit. Once you can see right through the design of their fucked up matrix, you can beat them like Neo in the matrix. You know what I'm saying? Like, you understand, like, a lot of these people that talk to you out of, like, try to say, don't eat, don't, how do you get your protein from plants? Bro, you don't, you, bro, all, all plants, let's get this out the way. All plants have protein. No animals make protein. Only plants make protein. That's why a lot of these carnivores go to herbivore animals and eat them. They're only middlemanning the, their way to get protein. They're middlemanning their way to get their nutrients, right? It's amazing. We're middlemanning our way of getting nutrients when we drink things like juice. We need to drink things with fiber. That's why smoothies are better. You need to grind it with the smoothie, with the, with the, keep the fiber and the sugar, all that in there. You know, right? So, um, and it's, it's, it's crazy, yo. So, when you understand we're just middlemaning all of our pathways to getting food, like, you understand, like, how sick and twisted this world is and how lazy we become. Like, dude, just fucking go eat the apple. Stop drinking apple cider. Stop drinking apple juice. Go eat an apple and get the juice from that apple. Like, come on. Is Irish moss the same as Irish sea moss on Amazon now? Looking for it. Uh, bro, honestly, I have to do more research on Irish moss. and But it's all the same, bro. Sea moss is Irish moss. It's the same. So don't get discouraged by that. I know that much about sea moss. Irish moss and sea moss is the same thing. It's just they come from different parts of the Caribbean. Like you got some that come from Honduras or maybe where Dr. Sebi was born at. You have some that come from Africa. You have some that come from the Caribbeans. Um, I'm sure Jamaica is a place that has it, you know, so they call it Irish moss. Dr. Sebi called it sea moss. So it's just they have different words for it, but it's all the same. Um, this book is actually pretty dope, too. This comes with this book when you buy it. It's only like 14 bucks to get this book, these books together. And uh, some shit on my book. Um, alkaline plant-based diet, reversing disease and saving the planet with an alkaline plant-based diet. This is what vegans need to be talking about. Vegans need to stop this vegan shit. Come to the alkaline. Fuck vegan and plant-based. Just come alkaline. Alkalinity. Alkalinity affinity, right? What grocery market do you recommend to go for for natural fruit and veggies down here? Man, go to Trader Joe's. Go to Fresh Time. Go to Aldi's. Those are uh, cheap, organic um, places that, that uh, have a lot of good produce and fresh produce for decent prices, right? Whole Foods is a little expensive, so I stay away from there, kind of. You can find it in these books. You can order on Amazon, bro. Since you're on Amazon ordering Irish sea moss, you want to go on Amazon and order these books. These books are going to save black people. These books are going to save the world, literally. So pay attention to these, y'all. Get them, read them, study them. Um, you know, I got my mom hip to this stuff. She's seven years old and... Um, she had pneumonia real bad, and I, I, I had her order these books, and I stumbled upon Dr. Sebi a year ago, and she was bedridden, and, you know, I, I changed her diet. I was like, yo, we need to remove the cheese and the meat out of your diet for a little bit and just see what happens because I'm doing a lot of research here. Let's eat these foods for a little bit and see what happens. She got better, and after she got better, she was like, man, I need to be, I need to eat more fruits and vegetables, and she actually became uh, more vegan. Um, more vegan friends, more alkaline friends. Um, so yeah, um, it's been quite a journey, man. It's been quite a quite a journey going from seventy pounds overweight to one hundred and sixty pounds. You can hit me up directly. You can hit me up directly right here. 
gonna leave my phone number right here, man, and my uh my email address right here. Um, but I'll, I'll also be posting a lot more informational videos here. Um, you guys should also check out my interview and my vegan meal that we have with Chip the Ripper or King Chip, who's an artist that's been featured with Kid Cudi on a lot of his projects, like the song Higher, um, a few other things. And I've shot a few of his music videos. Really cool dude, man. Really cool dude. And he's he's practicing this lifestyle. And uh, we did a, a video and it's on my YouTube. You can check that out now. Um, and he just talks about, you know, how he became vegan, how he became more plant-based and, and what, what compounds he's using, you know, the burdock root, the, the, the iris sea moss, the, um, you know, there's so many different things that, that Dr. Sebi recommended for us to keep this pH balance, uh, with, with us. Um, my name is high def bro. H I D E F. Um, my, my real name is Ely Didier in Belize. Um, hello, hello foreign, hello African, hello French, but Didier, that's, that's what, here, I'll spell it out for you too, man, so you can lock me in. But yeah, man, that's me. Um, I'm going to leave this video up here so people can check it out, but man, you can see the pictures in the thumbnail, yo, it's real life. Like I really was that big a year ago. You know what I'm saying? I have witnesses to testify for this shit. And <clears throat> I appreciate y'all uh, jumping on here. Um, it is a lot to take in, man. It's, it's a lot to take in. Um, but I will I will have more. So keep your journal live. Keep your journal open because there will be more. But I'm going to get off here right now, man. Um, I don't want to I don't want to give you all in one one jumble right here. I just want to give you all a little ins and outs right right quick. But Man, 70 pounds down in a, in less than a year. My mind is clear. The devil, I understand him, and I see him, and I see how he works, not in just one, but many angles, many different facets. Um, so be aware, y'all. Keep, keep your eyes open. Keep your eye open, too. You know what I'm saying? Keep your penile gland decalcified. You know what I mean? Stop taking all that fluoride. Stop stop drinking the faucet water. Stop drinking that lead Flint, Michigan water. That's how they're poisoning us, right? So uh, stay woke. Like he said here, stay woke, man. Hey, man, share this video, man. For real. I want everyone to share this or bits and pieces of it. Break it up. I don't give a fuck. Just get it out there, yo. Get this shit out there because people need to see this. People need to hear this information. And there's more to come. Shut up. Stay blessed, though, y'all.